Hello and welcome to episode 89 of Tall Guy Talks Travel with Rick Doherty. Of course, I am your host, Rick Doherty. In today's show, Sarah says we'll be back for the second straight week to discuss the D23 announcements that pertain to Disneyland Resort in Southern California. We started this conversation last week in episode 88, and we will wrap it up today. When you combine Sarah's two episodes about Disneyland with the three episodes Marissa from Chicago spent talking about the announcements for Walt Disney World, that makes five straight shows dedicated to D23. I promise that we will mix things up a little bit next week. There's also been a ton of big news, both good and bad, coming from Disney recently. I wanted to run through some of it before we got started. The most controversial topic is the price increases. Over at Disneyland, we're looking at one day, one park tickets going up about $10, while one day park hoppers are going up about $15. They did add two new tiers, however, at the low end with a $104 one-day one-park and a $169 one-day park hopper. Disneyland's Genie Plus option also went from $20 to $25, while over at Walt Disney World, it is now on a scale from $15 on less busy days and up to $22 on the busier days. Price increases have also been spread out to food, drinks, and other aspects of the parks. In happier news, Marissa is ecstatic because Fantasmic will be returning to Disney's Hollywood Studios in Walt Disney World next month. This is a revamped version of the Nighttime Spectacular. Personally, I hope it's back by November 17th because I already have my Park Pass reservation for Hollywood Studios that day, since it is the Star Wars Holiday Life Day. Epcot also got some good news. Monsieur Paul is reopening in the France Pavilion of World Showcase for the first time since the pandemic closures from over two and a half years ago. Back on the West Coast, Disney has announced that Disney 100, the celebration of 100 years of the Walt Disney Company, will be focused on Disneyland. This is going to include the obvious merchandise drops like popcorn buckets, sipper cups, and spirit jerseys. The celebration will also include a new nighttime spectacular called Wondrous Journeys, the adapted World of Color 1, special 100th decor in the parks, the opening of Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway, and the return of the parade, Magic Happens. All of those festivities are scheduled to get started on January 27th of 2023. We also think it is important to acknowledge the passing of Disney legend Angela Lansbury. Sometimes we may disagree with who receives the moniker of Disney legend, but you'd be hard-pressed to find someone who doesn't believe Angela Lansbury earned it 100%. From bed knobs and broomsticks to Mrs. Potts, she was a part of Disney. For anybody listening to this, probably from a very young age, she will be missed. Of course, this is Domestic Violence Awareness Month, and I will be wrapping up my fundraiser for CASA of Pinellas County, Florida on the 31st. As you know, I walked Ireland's National Famine Way back in June to raise money and awareness in the fight against domestic violence. As a community, all of you have shown so much support by making small and in some cases large donations to CASA. Let's finish this out strong over the next few weeks, and then I won't beg you for more than likes and subscriptions for months, I promise. I would like to ask that you donate $20 right now at casapinellas.org slash walkwithrick slash that's C-A-S-A-P-I-N-E-L-L-A-S dot org slash walkwithrick slash. Coming up this Saturday morning, October 15th, I will be a guest on the podcast Let's Break the Silence with Angeline. The episode will air live at 11 a.m. Eastern on Saturday on her YouTube page, Angeline Mitchell. After that, you can hear it by going to letsbreakthesilence.com slash podcast. We'll be talking about my pilgrimage and other topics surrounding domestic violence. 
I would be honored if you would listen. There will be links in the YouTube description on the Tall Guy Talks Travel episode. Starting on Monday, August 1st, I have debuted a new vlog from Ireland's National Famine Way every Monday. That will continue through the 14th and final vlog from the trail on October 31st. Those are running on the Tall Guy Talks Travel with Rick Doherty YouTube channel. We have so much great content on there from the podcast to videos from Ireland to dining reviews to theme park content. Please subscribe so that we can continue to grow this community. Now it's time to bring Sarah Says back on the show to talk about those West Coast D23 announcements. Thanks for being here, Sarah. Yeah, I'm so happy to be back. Thank you. I think these are the two most exciting announcements about what's coming to Disneyland Resort after D23 Expo, and they both have to do with Avengers Campus, which when Sarah and I both experienced Avengers Campus for the first time last year, we kind of had the same comment. We loved it. It's great. There needs to be more to do there. Mm -hmm. So... We are getting a Hulk meet and greet that looks really, really cool coming to Avengers Campus. And eventually, we are getting that e-ticket attraction that was promised with the first creation of the land. That there would be an e-ticket ride that would come in Phase 2, which would make Spider-Man Web Slingers that second tier attraction it makes it the navi river journey or the millennium falcon smugglers run of avengers campus and i think that's the level and i think that's the level of that ride but because it was the only new ride to open with it everybody treated it like it was an e-ticket and then was disappointed by what we got from the ride yeah, I totally agree. It's I love that ride. Don't get me wrong. I think it's great. It's wonderful, but it's not an e-ticket ride at all. <laughs> I mean, if you want to have to pick one for e-ticket out of the two rides that are part of that right now, it's definitely Guardians. But it's very exciting that even though we don't know right now what the e-ticket's going to be, that we can speculate, like, are they going to bring the Wakanda ship? Like they said way back in the day that oh, it's going to be this thing you get on a ship and you go to Wakanda. Is it going to be that? Is it going to be something else? Because I mean, they're saying it's going to be interactive where guests can like interact and fight bad guys and stuff. So is that going to be like Smuggler's Run where you're fighting them from the ship? Or it's, there's so many possibilities, so many possibilities. And yes, I'm incredibly excited for Hulk, by the way. I, when I saw him walk out at D23, um, kind of like baby Yoda, Grogu, I was screaming and ran downstairs to my husband's office. and was like, look, we'll be able to meet Hulk, which for people who know me personally, my last name sounds very similar to Hulk. So my husband has taken on this whole thing of the incredible Hulk is like our little family theme. So I'm not going to tell you what my last name is, but, um, but so we're really excited and I'm like, we can get a family photo with Hulk. It's going to be so amazing. <laughs> and much like the incredible Hulk, sometimes Sarah will just completely lose her temper and explode. <laughs> and she's wearing a green sweatshirt right now as we talk. <laughs> So for anybody listening who didn't see the Incredible Hulk meet and greet and how cool this Incredible Hulk is that you will get to see at Disney's California Adventure, can you sort of describe it? Because it's not just painting some 18-year-old kid green. Like, no. this is a big deal. No, it is not like 1970s Hulk on TV. It is Hulk. Like, he's huge. And ginormous, like I told my husband, it reminds me if they kind of, if Beast went to the gym, like the Beast character <laughs> that he went to the gym and turned green and got a little taller. It's, he's giant. He's ginormous. And it's like Mark Ruffalo when he is Hulk in the movies. It's like he walked out on stage as Hulk and he's in the Avengers suit. It's, it's surreal. Like that it's so realistic looking and it's amazing. It's amazing. <laughs> Disneyland has really upped the game with these character costumes and bringing these CGI and animated characters to life. Recently in the Oogie Boogie Bash, that brand new Ernesto de la Cruz character 
that is at Oogie Boogie Bash, it looks like a cartoon character is walking around the real world. Like, this is how they would have done Who Framed Roger Rabbit if they did it now. They just would have had somebody who was really short wear a costume like this because it looks like a cartoon is in the real world. It does. It is so realistic and it's and it's standing so close to it. Cause you know, you see it, you see it in theme parks from far away when you see the stage shows and things and you see, and you're like, Oh, it looks so realistic from far away. But then when you get up close to it, you can see, Oh, the head comes off. Oh, it's this, Oh, it's this. But these ones that you see in person now, like Ernesto de la Cruz or Hulk, you just, it's just Ant-Man. It's like, you walk up and you're like, Oh my gosh. Like it's, yeah, it's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. And yeah, I absolutely cannot wait to, I want to see Ernesto de la Cruz in person too, because it's so cool. It's so cool. And if any of you know how Sarah feels about Paul Rudd, the <sighs> Ant-Man character that's at Disneyland is so realistic. They have to have a special bodyguard to keep Sarah away from <laughs> I do love me some Paul Rudd. I am, you know what? I was thinking about this the other day when we were there that we did not see Ant-Man except for up on the top thing because they weren't really down wandering around. And I think it would have been a game changer if Ant-Man had walked past me. I probably would have fainted. I probably would have cried. And you and Courtney would have had to like take me back to the hotel until- I would have been like, mind, who is like, this so crazy right person that I agreed to meet up with like, in California? The Beatles. I saw Ant-Man, but in my head, I'd be going, it's Paul Rudd in there, but it wouldn't be Paul Rudd. And that makes me sad. <laughs> I do love Paul Rudd though. <laughs> I think at this point, letting people kind of know our personalities a little more is kind of fun because they've been listening now for almost two years and Ooh. to know our personalities a little bit more. And when Paul Rudd was named People Magazine's Sexiest Man of the Year, Sarah and I had a text message <laughs> fight. Because yes, I did. think, of course, it's supposed to be Matthew McConaughey. He should just <laughs> win it every year. It's it's kind of the way things should just happen. And Sarah was adamant that Paul Rudd is totally the sexiest man alive. And her husband is just hoping that Paul Rudd never gives her a shot. <laughs> However, I think the thing that is sexy about Paul Rudd, because I've been thinking about this, is that you know he's not going to leave his wife. So it's kind of a double-edged sword where exactly. if he did, he would become less sexy. Well, and his wife is a plebe, just like the rest of us. Like, she's not a famous actress. She's not that. She's just like a normal normal person like us that see you're still trying to talk yourself around. into it you're like it's, it's possible one day kind of like you're in marissa's conversation the other day between who was it right. uh James i get Marcy. into way too many fights with my female right? friends about why the celebrities they think are attractive well, you aren't asked as attractive. me and i answered paul yeah, rudd you, you agree. Like, well paul rudd's not in that movie <laughs> all right so here we go this is a complete side tangent at this point but they did <laughs> announce at D23 the new Disenchanted movie, the Woo sequel to Enchanted. We're going to talk about the movies in a separate episode. But I was messaging back and forth with Marissa about the new Disenchanted. And I said I was really excited for it. And she said she's cautiously optimistic because she's afraid about the script. And I said, maybe it's just the Irishman in me, but if I get to stare at Amy Adams and Patrick Dempsey for 90 minutes, I'm going to be fine. And Marissa said, don't forget James Marsden. And then I got into a big fight with Marissa, not about whether Amy Adams is better looking <laughs> than James <laughs> Marsden, but whether Patrick Dempsey is better looking than James Marsden. And my wife is sitting there seeing me have this conversation where I'm getting so angry at her. <laughs> uh. And then you got mad because I took Marissa's side. You didn't even tell me which one she picked. And I'm like, oh, definitely James Marsden. You're like, what is wrong with you two? <laughs> I don't recall James Marsden ever being called McDreamy. Thank you very much. <laughs> So, wow, how do we bring this back? To <laughs> I know. Oh, my God, that's so funny. So, yeah, Hulk, yay. New e-ticket ride that we know nothing about, yay. <laughs> and, of course, we have to mention that Splash Mountain concept art and 
They are bringing a Tiana restaurant. We already knew Splash Mountain at both Walt Disney World and Disneyland being rethemed to Tiana's Bayou Adventure. But Disneyland, you are getting a Tiana restaurant. I imagine this is probably just going to be a retheme of French Market, but we can still dream that they turn this into a real restaurant replacing Hungry Bear. Maybe that is a pie-in-the-sky idea. Maybe that's too much wishful thinking, but that's what I would like. We're also getting a new Tiana merchandise location, and all of this is expected for late 2024. Yeah, I'm very excited. If you follow me on Twitter, you know I am so excited for Tiana's Bayou Adventure because Tiana is one of my top three princesses. My wedding dress was based on Tiana. I absolutely adore her. And so I'm very excited. I am wondering with the restaurant, it would be great if they opened Tiana's place and took over Hungry Bear. I think that would be a fantastic idea. But I'm wondering from something I saw that I can't remember, I was trying to find it before we talked about this, was that it's not, it's a like Princess and the Frog themed restaurant, but it's not Tiana themed. It's like her mom or something or something in like the speculation is it's going to be more of like what French, the French market is now already, but with them just overlaying Princess and the Frog on it. So I'm hoping they keep the same menu because the food there is so good. (laughs) It is so good. And it's the only place on property you can get a po' boy, which I absolutely love. And you can get gumbo and you can get all that. So, so yeah, so I'm really, and I'm really happy she's getting a shop because I love Tiana merchandise too. So, (laughs) so yeah, I'm incredibly excited for this. So they need an official date in 2024. So I can start doing what I said I do, which is I'm going to be posting something princess on the frog on my Twitter every day until it opens. (laughs) It's going to be a lot of stuff. (laughs) Listen, this is a topic that has been discussed ad nauseum. We are Mm -hmm. all very excited for Tiana's Bayou Adventure. You're excited. Marissa talked about in the Walt Disney World version of these D23 announcements. She's super excited. I am really looking forward to it. This is a change that needed to happen, but I can't really add any more at this point. It has been talked about to death, and I'm just hoping that we can all get together enjoy this as an e-ticket attraction that is going to be awesome themed after one of the coolest best princesses in the disney princess line i'm really excited for it absolutely so now those are the announcements and the things that we know are coming to disneyland at some point in the future a lot of them in the very very near future But I want to address now a larger topic, what I think all of these announcements mean for the Disneyland Resort, because I have an opinion and I want to state it out there. And I don't know if you're going to agree with me or maybe you have a different take on these announcements. But when you combine all of the announcements for Disneyland from the D23 Expo with the fact that Magic Key Holders the new version of the annual pass at Disneyland. These magic key holders are not happy with how they're being treated by Disneyland, by the Disney company. I think that Bob Chapik, the CEO of the Disney company, is trying to turn Disneyland more into a Walt Disney World clone. He is trying to make Disneyland a place where people vacation for an entire week, for a week and a half. And he's trying to sort of weed out a lot of those annual pass holders because he sees the revenue being generated by Disneyland not being anywhere near what they're doing at Walt Disney World. We talked earlier in this conversation about Disney World being more of a conveyor belt assembly line type of vacation And I'm wondering if he's going to start moving Disneyland more in that direction to try to get more vacationers. Yes, a lot of people do vacation to Disneyland. It's a misnomer that it is just an annual pass holder local park. But I think they want to make it this worldwide vacation destination where people go for weeks at a time like they do to Walt Disney World. What do you think about my theory? 
Yeah. So I have a lot of thoughts on the whole magic key thing and what they're thinking, like potentially thinking as a company. And I know I mentioned to you during D23 that I feel like with all these additions to Disneyland and California Adventure, that they're trying to even it out between the parks because as of right now, it feels like everybody goes to Walt Disney World and that is where everyone's going to vacation. I also know from growing up going to Disneyland so frequently and I have an aunt who was a pass holder and she got rid of her pass because every time they went it was literally people just coming off of work kids cutting school people just going and hanging out so I can see where they're coming from from that as well by knowing someone who felt the impact of it not really being a vacation place they felt it was more of like hey everybody can afford season passes now so which I mean, is great. I think that's wonderful. But at the same time, it's like now it's turning into a hangout spot versus somewhere to come and enjoy a vacation. So they would bring their grandkids or they do things and go in or they decide to take a weekend. But then it was just like, oh, well, I can go to the mall and do this kind of thing is how they were feeling. Um, so I can see where they're coming from, from both sides. I am not on the popular end of the magic key holders and what they feel. Um, because I've never been a pass holder or magic key holder. I don't live in the area. I don't go frequently enough to be able to enjoy that. But at the same time as someone who does go like on vacation is it is a whole other feeling when you're there and it's a vacation destination and you're not there and being bombarded by locals. If I wanted to be bombarded by locals, I would go hang out at the beach. I mean, I don't have the super popular opinion on this. So it's, it makes it a more enjoyable experience, in my opinion, when you're there with other people who are there experiencing it as a vacation versus people who are there every day, because that's not fun. Then all you're hearing when you're in lines and things like that is, oh, well, you know this, oh, you know this. It's like, okay, great. But at the same time, I haven't been here in eight plus years or whatever. This is my first trip. And it kind of kills the mood for people who are just getting to visit for their first time or these kids who are really coming, they want to enjoy it and they want to experience all the cool new stuff. They don't care if it's IP or not, but instead it's like when you do have it where like you were saying, it's, it's like the neighborhood park. It's, it becomes that where you're hearing left and right, all these things that are wrong with it when you want to go and be immersed in the magic. And even if you're not hearing people complain, you're just hearing people have regular everyday conversations. Mm -hmm. When you're at Walt Disney World, people are moving to the next thing. They're trying to figure out where they're going next. Everything is revolving around the parks. But when you would be at Disneyland sometimes, I understand what you're saying. It would almost feel like you were crashing somebody's party. Yeah, it's almost like as a vacationer, you're inconveniencing people who live there and who are there all the time. And it's like, I'm sorry that you're not enjoying me enjoying my vacation because, oh, I'm being a tourist. It's like, of course I'm a tourist. I'm in Disneyland for crying out loud. It's like, and not, I'm not saying that everybody is that way at all. It's just, there's these small pockets of people, you know, that it, it's like, they come to kind of like with a lot of things, Disney world has this universal has this every theme park I feel has this, is people who feel like it's an ownership thing. Like I own this, like, this is my thing. I am a gatekeeper. It's like the big thing right now, my husband and I were talking about is the new Lord of the Rings series and the Game of Thrones series. People are gatekeeping. Like you can't watch Game of Thrones if you watch Lord of the Rings. And it's like, well, why not? <laughs> why not? I'm not a pass holder. So I can't come and visit Disneyland. Like I'm paying my money too. I'm actually paying them more money. And as I know, we've talked about this before too, is that yeah, pass holders, it's great and stuff. And you pay all this money for the pass and you get to go. But when you're not spending money in the parks, which is what they are designed for, it's a business model. Yes, it's great. It's a theme park and it's a wonderful, but it ultimately comes down to the dollar. It is business. And I don't love the management of Disney more than anybody else does right now. You know, I have my same qualms as everybody else does. But at the same time, when you just go, go hang out, ride a ride and then walk around, acting superior. That's not fun for anybody else. It is. It's a business. They have to make money somehow. And they're making money off people like me who don't have passes. I mean, yeah, it sucks that sometimes you don't get all those cool perks as a magic key holder, as a pass holder. Now people are mad, but it's a privilege to have a pass. It is a privilege. Not everybody can afford it, even with the payment plan. It is not all of us can do it. And so we want to be able to enjoy our vacations as well. Right. And so everybody just needs to go and have a good time and chill out. <laughs> and 
and ride the haunted mansion without saying the spiel at the beginning. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. <laughs> We're getting Sarah Hulk here. Um, I'm just, <laughs> I just had to add that in. <laughs> Sarah mad, turn into Hulk. No, um, Sarah smash. <laughs> I saw it put perfectly once in a tweet, which is something you don't hear every day. But somebody said, I'm a pass holder and I need to be treated with the respect that my discounted ticket affords me. Like we are paying less to be there. You all can see when you're looking at videos on the Tall Guy Talks Travel with Rick Doherty YouTube page. I'm there all the time at Walt Disney World. I'm paying like $7 a visit probably at this point. So (laughs) I understand that these places are not for me, but annual pass holders over at Disneyland, they had been catered to very, very well for so long. And they started to expect that for better or for worse. Like I understand why you would expect that. But at some point, the Walt Disney Company is looking at Disneyland and saying, we need to make more money off of this because we look at how much money we're making off every square foot at Walt Disney World. We are making money left and right, hand over fist, because the overwhelming majority of guests are vacationers. So they are here spending the money they saved up five years to spend. Not the person who goes, like me, just after work. Now, I do videos, so I spend a lot of money when I go because I drop $40 at Nomad Lounge for you. For you, listeners. (laughs) And not every pass holder does that, but... I understand completely why they would move in this direction. I just wonder what effect it's going to have on the vibe at Disneyland. I really don't know how it would change it. I mean, when we were there, there were no pass holders. Like when you and I went with Courtney, there were, because it had been done because of COVID and literally what was it? Two days or three days before we left is when it started. And the vibe thankfully when we were there, you know, it was amazing. Like it was chill. It was like everybody on, it was all vacationing people. And I thankfully was not there over the weekend. Like, I don't know if you guys noticed a difference after I left because um, over the weekend people had their passes back. And so more people were coming in. So I don't know if that changed it at all, but I'm going to be very interested to see because our next, hopefully cross our fingers trip will be to take our son in 2024 and it'll be my first trip back to Disneyland when there has been like when the passes are back. So I'll be interested to see, you know, how it's different, but I mean, ultimately, like I said before, if it's affecting pass holders that they're giving up their passes because they're so sick of other pass holders, it's like, yeah. And in Disney world as well, one thing I've noticed, cause so many people that I am friends with on Twitter, like you and many others are pass holders at Walt Disney world. But the thing is when you go, you are spending money, you are buying things. You're showing us stuff on social media, which don't even get me started on some of those TikTokers. Holy moly. <laughs> but, um, but it's like, you are spending money and you're contributing to the business. It's not, you're going and hanging out and not doing anything and not buying anything. So it's completely different. It's in my opinion, it's completely different. The pass holders at Walt Disney World versus the pass holders at Disneyland. Yeah. When we were there last year, the magic keys went on sale or were activated Mm -hmm. the day that we flew out. So we only went to downtown Disney to have a meal and then get on the airplane. So we saw the lines for people getting into the park at Disneyland, but our last day in the parks was Friday. Oh, okay. Yeah. And Saturday was the first day of Magic Key. So we did have a very different experience on Mm -hmm. our last trips to Disneyland. Yeah, it definitely is. And when you see those lines, it's kind of like, (gasps) especially when we went, there were no lines and it was like. It's a tough one. It is a very touchy subject with people. Very touchy subject. But like I said, it's a privilege and it's a great privilege people can get, but ultimately it is a privilege. It is not a right to have a key. If it were right, we'd all have them and we don't. (laughs) Sarah, a lot of our listeners can't even tell because you are such a professional, but you are extremely sick and you (laughs) fought through the illness to do this episode to do these past two episodes 
of Tall Guy Talks Travel with Rick Doherty. You fought through the illness and we really, really appreciate it. Thank you for being here. Yeah, thanks for having me back. I'm glad I could tough it out and excited for you all to hear this and what's coming up with our shows. Now, after five straight weeks of talk about D23 announcements, we're going to get back to other topics surrounding the theme parks next week. Back in episode 84 on September 8th, Sarah and I talked about the best rides to rope drop at Disneyland, Disney's California Adventure, and we headed to the East Coast to talk about the rope drop rides at Magic Kingdom. Well, since we tend to be a little chatty, we ran out of time to cover the other three U.S. Disney theme parks, and we will rectify that next Thursday in episode 90 of Tall Guy Talks Travel with Rick Doherty. Sarah and I will go over our options for the best rides to hit first thing in the morning at Epcot, Disney's Hollywood Studios, and Disney's Animal Kingdom. Until then, have a great week.